Hi everyone and welcome back to another workshop video. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to do a 50 hour air can service on a rear shock. Specifically the RockShox Super Deluxe. So, see you in a bit. So what tools am I going to need to do this job? Well, I'm going to need my bench vise. I'm going to need some isopropic alcohol, some shop towel, or kitchen oil in my case, a clean cloth, a strap wrench, a shock pump, a couple of different size picks, a service kit, correct for the shock that you are performing the service on, and I need something to remove this mounting hardware. Now there is a specific tool you can get for that. However, I'm going to use a piece of pipe and a small quarter inch drive socket and I'll show you how to do that now. So on my particular shock, these spacers just slide off and you can take those off with your hand. However, to get the air can off, we've got to take out uh, this, this metal pipe work which goes through the bushing of the shock and we're gonna do that by pressing it out. So if I put my, my hollow pipe in the vise and put it over this end like that and then I get my small socket the socket will catch on this side and the plan is to use the vise to then push this through this will go through the pipe and it'll come out of the shock so let's give that a go there we go now before we go any further we're going to take all of the air out of this shock so I know it's not pressurized and we can do that just by pressing in the air release valve inside, but I'm gonna do it using a shock pump because I wanna know what my air pressure is just to make things easier to set up later on. Okay, and just to double check that there's nothing left in there, we're gonna remove the valve core. We're gonna do that with a valve core remover. There we go, the valve core is out. There is definitely no pressure left in that shock. There might still be a little bit of pressure in the negative air chamber. I'm gonna show you what we can do about that in just a moment. Let's put the valve core back in for safekeeping. Okay, so we've got the shock in the vise now. Um, I haven't got any soft jaws for my vise yet, so I'm just using this, this cloth. It's important you put something in the vise just to protect the shock a little bit. Now we're gonna do something before we undo the air can. We're gonna grab a cloth and we're gonna put it through this eye at the bottom here, because if there is still a little bit of pressure in the negative air chamber, when we undo this, there's a possibility the air can can fly off, and we don't want that to happen, we don't want to damage it, so this will stop the air can coming flying off completely. Now you might be able to undo this with your hand. Mine is on a little bit too tight, so I'm gonna use this strap wrench. And the strap wrench is great because we can put it round, we can put all the torque on that we need, but it won't damage the air can, it won't squash it or crush it like a pair of vice grips might do. So we're going to put that on there, I'm going to undo this air can. So you can start to hear a little bit of air coming out of this now. There must still be a bit of air in the negative air chamber, so I'm just going to undo it very slowly. And there we go. So I can remove this now, out of that eyelet, take my strap wrench off, take off the sag ring and the air can just slides away. I'm going to set that to one side, I'm going to do with this first and then we'll service the air can in just a bit. Okay, so take a look at what we got here, so you can see we've got some of the old oil and a bit of dirt just in there. It's not actually looking too bad. Other than this here, it doesn't actually look too dirty at all. But what we're gonna do now, we're gonna remove these white seals here and this black seal, and we're gonna replace those. We're gonna clean off this old oil, and we're gonna put new oil in there. So let's get onto that. So when doing this, you need to be really careful that you don't scratch anything and then we're just gonna give the whole shock a clean down with some isopropic alcohol and some shop towel. Okay, so while that's drying out, let's get onto the air can. 
Now there's a seal just here, a very thin seal on the thread, so we're going to take that off. And again, I'm going to match that with one of the new ones. So that looks right. So there's my old one over there, my new one next to it. Let's take a look down here and take um, one of our main seals out. Again, quite a lot of dirt on that. Let's match, match that up with a new one. We've got another one of these white plastic rings. It's actually a split ring. So it's got a little, a little crack, or well, not a crack, a split in it already, which makes it easier for removing. Being very careful not to scratch anything. One more rubber seal to come out. And there we go. There's one more seal that I've forgotten about in this part of the shock. It's this one here, it just goes right up inside by where the volume spaces are. So again, being very careful not to scratch anything. Take this out. Now it's time to clean up the air can and then we'll start fitting the new seals. Right, so I'm gonna fit the new seals in the order I took them off. So the first thing I'm gonna put on is this new O-ring which fits at the bottom of the thread. We'll apply some grease to all of these in just a moment. That goes on there and it sits at the bottom really nicely. Now, I'm gonna put in this new rubber seal, which I don't know if you can see this on the camera, there's two little lips on the inside. So we've got the opening here, and there's a the first little ridge, little lip. Let's get the pick so I can point at it. There's the first little ridge, and that's the ridge that the main dust seal sits on and then underneath there's another ridge this second ridge is where this seal sits and then the white split ring fits on top of that so let's enter this in now again i'm going to apply some grease to these in a minute once everything's fitted so this split ring will close in on itself which means i can get it in there this is taking too long, I'll speed it up on the uh, on the video. There we go. And the easiest things to get in, I must admit. And there we go, that's in now. And before I fit this other seal on here, I'm going to apply some grease. Now, the RockShot seal kit comes with a little pillow pack of oil, which we're going to use in a moment. It's 15 weight 50, and a little tube of dynamic seal grease. You can buy this in bigger tubs. I bought this for when I was doing my uh, my forks, but you don't have to go out and buy a tub like this because the seal kits do come with more than enough. And now I'm gonna fit the main dust seal. Which sits just nicely in there. And again, I'm gonna apply a nice healthy amount of dynamic seal grease to the inside of this. Right, that's the air can done and ready. Now let's focus on the main shock assembly. Okay, so the first seal I'm gonna put in is this big seal which goes up here by the volume spacer, the one I almost forgot about. So just gonna slide that on. It's gonna sit nice and in place at the top of the shock. After a bit of convincing, and removing the volume spacers, that's now in. Let's move on to the other seals, but to do that, I need to put it back in the vise. So I'm gonna put one of these white split rings on at the top there. Then the rubber seal. And then the other white split ring. There we go. And again, a nice healthy dose of some dynamic seal grease. And we are almost there. It's almost time to apply the new oil. Just double checking the old seals, making sure that I've got nothing left. That is sorted. There's one component left, which I need to clean this up before it goes back on. Okay, so now it's time to apply new oil to the shock. Now, a rear shock doesn't need anywhere near as much oil as the front forks. When I did my um, 
my rock shock uh, lyric fork it needed 10 mil of oil in both legs they only provide a couple of mil of oil they recommend you put about half of this pack in the oil can itself which I'm going to do now just going to run it around the oil can like that down so it doesn't leak out and to put the other half in here here, slide this back down, and then it's a case of winding the oil can back on. Now we used a strap wrench to take it off, we don't need to use any tools for putting it back on, we are just going to put it on hand tight. If you over torque this you can damage the seals. You do have to apply quite a lot of force when pushing the air can back onto the shock. One thing I haven't shown on the video, I've also put some grease on the thread just to stop that binding and make it easier to take off again in the future. Well, that was a bit tougher to screw on than I, uh, than I thought it would be. We don't need to tighten this up with a strap wrench or anything. It's just got to be hand tight. All right, that is definitely hand tight. Can't get that any tighter. My sag ring on. So to reinstall the hardware, it's exactly the same as I did earlier, just in uh, reverse order. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on the hardware just to ease it into the shock a little bit. And then I'm gonna use the vise to push it back in. So I'm just gonna get it going to start off with. Now the Trek Remedy has got different size spaces either side of it. So I'm gonna put the biggest spacer on as a guide, squeeze this back in, be careful not to go too far, and fit the other spacer on the other side. That's about right, now before I start fitting it to the bike, I'm going to give the shock a good clean. I'm going to soak it in isopropic alcohol, just so all my more greasy hand marks off it. And there we go, all fitted and reinflated ready to hit the trail again. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you're gonna attempt your own 50 hour service after watching this video, let us know in the comments down below. If you have found this video useful and you've liked it, please click the picture of the thumbs up, give the video a like, click the picture of the mountains down below to subscribe, and click over there to have a look at some of our other videos. And we'll see you again soon.